Well, fast am I. Miss Adrian Kane, as Tammy Unshaw, Jew, the law through Mikian and Gil Galeton, Jew, as a Gil Xetrera hit as Ganch Jane, Chenya Danelian, Heathen. But don't worry, I'm not going to continue speaking in Manx. I'm sure a few are getting a little bit nervous there. You know, I knew he was going to speak about Manx, but I didn't really he was actually going to speak in Manx, you know. What do we do? Just clap at the end intermittently. But don't worry. But nevertheless, as I'm going to be speaking quite a bit about the language, I think it is important that um, I teach you a little bit of Manx. Or as we'd say in Manx, I'll learn you a little bit of Manx. And there's no difference, which is quite interesting in the Manx language, between the word which means to teach and to learn. It's ginzach. So I'm going to learn you a little bit of Manx to start off with. Okay. The Manx phrase for I like is smileum. Smileum. Can you all say smileum? Again? Smiley. Okay. Smiley manon means I like the Isle of Man. Smiley manon. So can we all say smiley manon? Yindesach. Yindesach means wonderful. Yindesach. How do you say wonderful? Yindesach. How do you say I like the Isle of Man? Oh, pretty impressive. And manon abu means hurrah for the Isle of Man. Manon abu. Can we all say manon abu? How do you say wonderful? Yindesach. We might need to practice that. How do you say I like the Isle of Man? Smileyam Manin. How do you say hurrah for the Isle of Man? Manin Abu. Manin Abu. I'll, I'll get back to that. I'll check as we go through just to see if you remember that. Earlier this year, I was walking through Port St. Mary and I saw on a billboard outside the, um, the news, news agents there a sign which said, Tony Blair is Manx. And I thought, that came as a bit of a shock. I didn't realise that. That's all. It's the sort of thing I should know, I thought, really. But on further investigation, I, by buying the newspaper, it wasn't quite as simple as that. And actually, one of his ancestors in 1693 was called Brideson from Douglas. And I thought, well, maybe that's pushing it a bit to claim that Tony Blair is Manx as a consequence of that. But it did get me thinking about the nature of identity and what it means to be Manx. And a lot of people ask me, things like that. What does it mean to be Manx as a consequence of the job I do, which is to teach a language, to encourage people to find out about the language and to support those who are learning. So it's, it's not unnatural that people will ask me about what it means to be Manx. And you know, indeed, what is Manx? What is the Manx language? What's the point of learning Manx Gaelic? Shouldn't you be doing something more useful with your life, like learning Arabic or Chinese or something like that? Well. I have a lot of time for those people who take up to learn the language, either as adults, those parents who encourage their children to learn the language in the schooling system here, or those parents who send their children to the Bunskol Gilgak, the Manx Gaelic School in St John's. It's a big commitment. And with the best will in the world, by learning Manx, you're unlikely to become more famous. Okay? You're very unlikely to become richer. Okay? You're unlikely to be more powerful. And certainly, if my experience is anything to go by, you, you're unlikely to become more attractive to members of the opposite sex. So why learn a language when you're not going to be more richer, more powerful, uh, more sexy as a consequence? Well, I think people, people do it, not for those external reasons. They do it because of a story, um, a story which goes back and further to one of the great cultural achievements in the Isle of Man, the publication of the Bible in Manx in the 18th century, a remarkable achievement, probably the greatest cultural achievement this island's ever seen, that a small island could have translated this, this tone. It goes from there, John Kelly, the editor of the Bible, up to maybe the modern day, such things as the Gruffalo and Manx. It goes through a period of, of flourishment for the language, to decline, emigration, poverty, and in some sense, reinvention. And people who become involved in the language do so because that puts them part of that story that narrative of the Isle of Man, that narrative of the language, it gives them a sense of belonging, a sense of place, a sense of community. How do you say I like the Isle of Man? Smiley Smiley Manon. How do you say wonderful? (coughs) Yindesak. How do you say hurrah for the Isle of Man? Man in the boo. Not bad, not bad, not bad. It's not just an individual narrative, I think, though. It's not just a narrative for people like myself who have been through that journey from you know, finding out of the Bible, John Kelly, up to the the Gruffalo, etc. It's also an important narrative for the Isle of Man, I believe. um, An important story, maybe a different story, 
Most people's perceptions of the Isle of Man are a bunch of cliches, certainly outside the Isle of Man. They have very little understanding what it means to live here. And in a previous life, I used to be a school teacher in London. And when I said I was going home to the Isle of Man, most people thought I was going to get the boat from Portsmouth or Southampton or something. They had no real perception of where the Isle of Man is or what the Isle of Man was about. And although I did say it won't make you more famous, learning Manx, um, I nearly achieved a little bit of fame, just nearly, um, a number of years ago when um, I was asked onto the Paul O'Grady show to teach Lenny Henry some Manx. He wasn't very good, but that's another story. Um, and just before the, the programme, the producer asked me, you know, I didn't realise they spoke Manx Gaelic on the Isle of Wight. And I said, well, <laughs> again, neither did I. That's something I should know about, really. Tony Blair, Isle of Wight. So it, it sends out a different narrative about the Isle of Man, I think, particularly the rejuvenation of the language. It's a positive news story. This is something we've done really, really well. The people who worked for the language in the 50s and 60s, they would be amazed at what's been achieved over the last 20 years. We have now a Gale school. All the kids there, over 70, achieved their whole education through the language. It's remarkable. And it's something we should be proud of. And it's something which sends out a different narrative. The Isle of Man isn't just about you know, low taxes. It isn't just a windier version of Preston with, with lower taxes. It has its own culture, traditions, history, and just as we have those and every right for them, we, sh we, should, we have the right to our own parliament, our own tax system, our economic system. How do you say hurrah for the Isle of Man? <laughs> Wonderful? Yes. I like the Isle of Man. Smiley and Manning. Pretty good. Smiley and Ban. Also, this year I was reading a a book review, and it was, it was about um, the Viking period in the Isle of Man, the Middle Ages, when the Isle of Man was important. Okay, it was central to the British Isles, and the Isle of Man had a really quite high profile because of its, its role in, I suppose, early medieval history. And the review to the book said, it's sort of in comparison to the Middle Ages, today the Isle of Man barely registers in the consciousness having become largely peripheral to the cultural and political milieu of modern Europe. I thought, that's a bit harsh. You know, I, I, you know, I don't agree with that, peripheral. Certainly the work I do, I don't believe it's peripheral. I know I live in the Isle of Man. This is my home. But also I, I, I genuinely believe that the work we do within the language community isn't peripheral to Europe, isn't peripheral to the bigger issues in the world. It's in some sense central. And that's a, another narrative. You know, why, why learn Manx when you could be learning Mandarin or Arabic? Well, those, people, those of us who do speak Manx, we're aware of the advantages of bilingualism. Um, we speak many of the languages, usually. There is room in your head for Spanish and Italian if Manx is in there, OK? Just because Manx is in there doesn't mean you can't fit Arabic in there. You can fit many of the languages. We're aware of that bilingualism and the importance of that issue of bilingualism. But we're also aware of the, the importance of what we do. We've been very lucky in the Isle of Man because of the renaissance in the language and the culture and the music and associated with that and the work we, you know, I'm involved in to have a number of people come to the Isle of Man from similar language communities, Jersey, Guernsey, Sami communities, America, Canada, Australia, to find out about the work we do. Um, and we hope some of the work we do can help them in the work they do. It's not peripheral. In fact, it's a story of reaching out to the world, sharing ideas. And we're aware that some of the stuff we do is, has been a consequence of what's happened in places like Hawaii, New Zealand, Scotland, etc. We're part of a global community. We're part of a global sort of um, belief in the importance of what we do. So that's another narrative. You know, why, why learn Manx when you know, that the world is so troubled, whether you've got, you know, Ukraine or Iraq or whatever. Well, we have to remember that things such as language, music, literature, poetry, art, sport indeed, are those things which make us human in the end. And we have to hold on to them. And they are also the things which make the Isle of Man what it is today. And I firmly believe that the language and the revival and the culture and the music go into making the Isle of Man what it is.
not different or not better or worse than anywhere else, but different. And not the Isle of Wight, not Jersey, not Guernsey, but the Isle of Man. And that's an important narrative, I believe. An important narrative to share with people who live in the Isle of Man and people who come to the Isle of Man to find out about the work we do. There are many other things which go into making the Isle of Man Manx. It could be hot tune, bonnig making, TT races, tin bath races, whatever. And they all go into the melting pot of what makes up the Isle of Man is what it is today in the 21st century. So it's not peripheral at all. And the work we do, I believe, isn't peripheral to the work of other small communities throughout the world. But it's also part of a bigger picture. Um, it's about, you know, what's the point of the Isle of Man? You know, um, the language community and the work we've done, done isn't, is part of a bigger, what we, a bigger belief. I suppose we'd like to make the Isle of Man more culturally interesting and diverse, but with language and culture and identity at the heart of it. But also, we w we'd like to see the Isle of Man become socially inclusive, economically prosper prosperous, and environmentally sustainable. They're all part of that general um, world view. And so the work we do in the language community integrates with all that um, general overview. Not only that, um, we want to make the Isle of Man welcoming, not just a, a, a well-off place and a, an inclusive place and an environmentally safe place and a culturally diverse place, but a welcoming place. The language doesn't belong to just people called Jew and Kakan from Craigneish. It doesn't. It belongs to anyone who wants to make this island their home. And they should have access to that language, to that culture, to that identity. It's about a sense of place, of belonging, of accepting this place as your home. You don't have to, as Tony Blair might want to, trace his ancestors back to 1693. That's not the point. We'd like to make the island as socially open as possible. Anyone who wants to claim this island as their own should have access to that culture and the traditions. Ultimately, we don't really need Tony Blair. Um, we just need ourselves. Okay, we need a sense of vision, a sense of place, and a sense of purpose. Within the language community, we're happy about where we are. Partly, okay, in the past, with the Bible and all the work that people in the past did for the community. Also, very much in the modern, where it'd be in the world of Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Very much rooted in the Isle of Man, but reaching out to the world with the work we do, sharing um, with the world, with the work we do, um, and hopefully learning from other communities as much as they learn from us. Part in the past, part today, part local, part global. And a community which is confident, socially inclusive, culturally diverse and exciting, and welcoming to everyone. And with that sort of vision and sense of purpose and commitment, there's no limit to what we can achieve as an island and as a culture um, and as, a, as a, a community. So in the end, we don't need Tony Blair, thank you very much, or we need our, ourselves, because after all, um, I like the Isle of Man. Smiley Manning. Hurrah for the Isle of Man. Yindasach, <laughs> yindasach. Good night. Thank you very much.